Hello, everybody. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Tiffany. I'm a tipsy artist. Cheers. And today we are painting wine glasses. Uh, so this will be my second class today. And uh, we did a really cool abstract. Now we're doing one that's more inspired by stained glass. Um, so and I'm going to check the Facebook feed really quick, make sure everything's good. And I see that it is. And I'm just going to check here. Yeah, okay, so I don't want feedback, so I'm going to go ahead and stop that. Let's go back to the class. Okay, here we go. All right, so we have these really cool uh, kits that um, we, d we do sell with these to make them very easy. And so uh, I've got one here right behind me, so you can take a good look at that here. And they're on our website, tipsyartist.com. And these glasses are shatterproof, very thick and durable, and also dish dishwasher safe. And so, yay, so those are awesome. And then uh, let's go ahead and talk about our supplies a little bit. We have two lovely little brushes here. I call this little buddy, I call this little bit. So they will be helping us paint today. And then we've got your paint kit. Mine's a little bit used, but you'll have a brand new one in your kit. But we have really cool abstract paints, very thick and awesome. And then I've got a bucket of water nearby to wash out our brushes. And then I've got my plates for mixing and everything. And then, of course, some paper towels or wash rag works really great. All right. So, okay. Oh, and also a uh, Sharpie. So that's going to help give us a really great start here with our look. And I'm going to go ahead and put on my glasses here so that I can see a little bit better. But here's my permanent marker. And so to get started, and I'm just going to do the front half today for the class. Uh, that'll give us a great start with the instruction. So um, what I'm going to do is I'll just start uh, by making a line. And again, there's no real rules with this. But let's just take a line that starts up at the top and then has a little bit of a curve to it. Let's make another line has another little curve to it. Okay, and then we'll start to connect to that line. Kind of see how that's going. So there's no exact measurements, no right or wrong way to do this. I'm just making, starting right here at the top and then just connecting to the line we already have in place. And then as you can see here at the base, I'm going to actually just make this black at the base all the way around. So I'll just kind of do a baseline to connect all of those and I'll have black that will just come up to that point. Okay, so that's gonna give us a good start and just to be sure, we don't want to lose these lines. So I'm going to go ahead and do another line to reemphasize these. That'll help y'all see it too. And we'll be coming back over that with paint later, but this definitely gives us a great start to begin with. So again, let's just reemphasize this. And if you have a shaky hand, don't worry about it. Because again, it's all very abstracted, so it certainly doesn't have to be really perfect or anything. So just getting that basic guide in here. And we'll have probably a little bit of overpaint over the top anyway. And you'll always be able to come back in with either your permanent marker or just black paint at the very end to refine it. I'm just trying to make sure that our shape is very well established and that you can see it really well. All right, let's go ahead and make this very defined. And let's finish this one. And then we'll come down with this one. 
And you'll notice too, I can help steady my hand a little bit with my other pinky there. Just rest the weight of it on the glass and that will help stabilize your hand too as you work into these other shapes here. And welcome again to everybody that's out there joining us. I always get back with everybody at the end of the class. So if you have any questions, please feel free to ask me. I always get back with those, answer any questions at the end of the class. Also, if you just want to say hi, say hi, and I'll say hi back and talk to you after the class too. All right, so beautiful start there. There's our stained glass look. Okay, so we're going to let this rest for just a minute and we're going to start to mix up some paint. And really this is any color that you want, but we are going to keep it fairly vibrant. So a lot of the colors may not actually even require mixing since they are so vibrant to begin with. All right, like for example, I'm going to go ahead and start with some cadmium red. And I've been painting quite a bit today, so I've got a mixing plate already started. So I'm going to do another little pea size amount of the cadmium red there. And just for fun, let's talk about a little bit of mix just for fun here. You can leave it as cadmium red. It's very warm in that way, but you can also cool it off quite a bit and add some primary magenta. That will make more of a cooler red. So I'm going to do another pea size amount of the primary magenta. Have that nearby. And then I'll use my little buddy brush as a mixer and we're going to mix up the primary magenta and the cadmary, cad, cadmium red. Easy for you to say. <laughs> Apparently not easy for me to say. All right, cadmium red, primary magenta. Let's go ahead and mix those two together. Ta-da, beautiful, cool red. All right, so in one of these shapes here, I'm going to go ahead and start to place that down. So let's just start here. We want to use the flat side of the brush to go into the larger area. This gives us, so you'll hold it parallel to the glass. And this gives us a light, gentle hand. So let me show you what a lot of beginners do that frustrates them. So they hold it like a pencil and they do this and they get frustrated because it digs into the paint, scrapes right into it, and makes it very transparent. So you have to do something that feels a bit unnatural. You have to hold the brush, again, over to the side of the surface area, the glass in this case, parallel to it. That gives you a light, gentle hand and allows a lot more of that paint to just rest right on the surface area. So, and then when you have to, let me move my keyboard out of the way. So I'm gonna grab, oops, I'm gonna grab my paint, have it a little bit closer to me. Now, initially you'll find that you have to, in order to do a really nice precise line, you will have to like hold the brush over on the edge side. And that's okay. And it will be a transparent line because it will have a little bit of a, a dig into it. But at least it gets that first line of paint right next to that line. And then once you've got that down, then you want to turn your brush back over to the side and just pull out into the surface area here to where you have a nice thick coat of that red right over the surface area. You can always come back in with a second coat too. All right, again, I'm gonna switch over now to more of like holding it like a pencil. And then just pull. And I did do a little bit of an overpaint on my black line but I can still see through it. And if it bothers you too much, if you happen to do the same thing, you can also just take your fingertip here and you can just do, if I can do a little bit of a cleanup right there, just like that, and then rework into that space. I'm gonna turn it this way so I can see it. 
Got a little bit of a glare with the light there. So I'm going back over the surface area, smooth big strokes here, making sure that my brush is now more over to the side so that I have really good coverage. All right, so that's our very first section. It's already looking really great. And even if you have a little bit of overpaint on that black, don't worry about it because when it sets up and dries, you can either use the uh, permanent marker to redefine your lines or uh, paint, which of course paint is more lasting and more durable. But if you're just using this as decor and you have a little bit of a shaky hand, then of course the permanent marker will also work just perfectly for that too. Okay. So here's our red to begin with. Um, let's go with a, a different color now that's very bright and vibrant. I'm rinsing out my little buddy, making sure that it's completely clean and doesn't have any of that red on it anymore. And now I'm going to go for some bright green. Okay, so I want some cadmium green. little pea size amount of that. Let's give you a little visual right there. There it is. And then let's use some bright yellow green. Another little pea size amount here. Here we go. And thank you again to all the people out there joining me today. We're so glad you're here. Please say hello in the comments or if you have any questions, let me know. I'll get back with you right after class. All right, we'll be using Little Buddy now, mixing these two together. I'm going to keep that really bright. So again, this is the bright yellow green and the cadmium green. All right, it's really pretty, very bright. And now we'll go into another section here. So let's go into this little section here. Again, light hand here, side of the brush. Let's go ahead and, when we get close to those edges, let's go ahead and turn it and use the edge side of my brush to go ahead and get right next to that line. And then we'll turn it back over to the side. Make sure y'all can see that. So edge now. And then we'll turn it back over to the side parallel to the glass. To so get a really nice thick coat right over the top. Really pretty, we're getting there. So lovely. Our stained glass is happening. Okay, we're going to rinse out and dry off, and then we'll mix up another color. Let's do some beautiful turquoise next. I'm gonna put that right next to the red because I love that contrast of the turquoise right next to the red. All right, put this lovely down for just a second, and Let's talk about the mix here. So we'll be using some primary cyan blue. Little pea size amount of that. Okay, and then some viridian, little pea size amount of that. And then we'll be using some titanium white. So we'll do a pea size amount of that for sure. Maybe even more like a quarter size. We'll have that nearby. I already have a lot loaded up on my plate. So I'm going to grab a nice big dollop of the white. Let's go ahead and do a touch of the primary cyan blue and then a touch of the viridian. We're going to mix all this together. And this will give us a really pretty turquoise color. You can make it lighter if you want.
All right, so very lovely. Let's go ahead and start to work this onto the surface area of the glass now. And I want this in this section here. Again, trying to work it in as much as possible using the flat side of the brush so you get really nice coverage. But if you do have to make a nice precise line right next to the edge, just remember to go ahead and then you do hold it more like a pencil and you can always work back into it with the flat side of the brush. We got our edge work done. Now we'll go ahead and work into the center of that. And trying to hold it more over to the flat side. So it gives you a light, gentle hand, works in right over the top. It's looking really pretty. It's looking good. And then I'll just continue working this into that shape. And again, if the black isn't perfect, don't worry about that because we're going to come back in at the end and refine that black and clean it up a little bit. And that'll help provide a nice line around all of our sections of color. All right, kind of see how this is already coming along, looking really pretty. Let's go ahead and rinse out. And let's do something really bright and fun. Let's do some beautiful orange. Okay, so we've got some cadmium orange. Again, did a nice big pea size amount of that. And let's really brighten it up quite a bit. Let's pull in some cadmium yellow too. And cadmium yellow on its own is also quite gorgeous. But we're going to mix the two up a little bit. Do another pea size amount of that. All right, so cadmium orange, cadmium yellow. Let's mix those two together. Loving that. Very bright. Has a wonderful tangerine quality to it. Okay, so, hmm, where to, where to? Let's go ahead and just do it on this side. Again, flat side of the brush as much as you can. We'll kind of smooth that out but get really good coverage over the surface area. All right, and we're just stopping half the glass, but you get the general idea there of filling that in with some color. Very pretty. All right. Now let's go ahead and do some really pretty lavender. And I'm going to pull that over on the side next to the red since it's a bit more complimentary over there. Um, let's go ahead and take some violet. Little pea size amount of that. Looks like just it's just purple. That's all it is basically. Okay, and then I'm going to take a clean little buddy and let's work a little bit of white into that. I want to lighten it up a little bit so you really feel the vibrant color of the violet there because it was so, it's so dark to begin with, it almost looks black. So I'm adding a little bit of white to that to where it's just a really beautiful shade there. I like that a lot better. All right, really lovely. So I'm going to work this in next to the red. 
And again, just flat side of the brush as much as possible to give you a light, gentle hand. So we work into that section. It's looking beautiful. And if it gets really tiny, then of course, remember, you can use the edge side of the brush to work into that smaller section. And then switch back over to the flat side. And then just fill the rest in. Again, really concentrate on holding it parallel to the wine glass. That'll give you a light, gentle hand. And again, allows that paint to just rest right on the surface have to kind of keep telling yourself that because it does feel a little bit unnatural. All right, we're getting that beautiful stained glass look. It's looking good. And now you can actually even do, I'm gonna do a pop of white in there. So no mixing on this, just beautiful white, just as it is. So getting a clean little buddy again. Let's go ahead and grab just pure white, titanium white. And let's just work that into this last little section here on this side. really pretty all right so now we've got this really great coverage there in all of our sections um, so the last step and this is what I recommend um, at home is just to go ahead and let this completely set up and dry and then work in your black lines over the top to really help make those pop right out in front again and define each little section. Um, don't rush it. Again, just let it have set up and dry time. That way you have the option of working back in with a permanent marker. And again, you cannot use a permanent marker on wet paint. It will just ruin your permanent marker instantly. So do make sure you let that set up and dry. Now paint, you can certainly work in wet paint right over the top now without any problems. Uh, but this sometimes can be easier for beginners to work this in over the top and then do a little bit of fine tuning with your paint too. Uh, but we have a beautiful little bit brush here. Mine's brand new, so I'm going to go ahead and take this off. A little plastic top here. It's a little bit hard, so let's go ahead and rinse out a little bit. Kind of make those bristles flexible again. To remove the excess water here and I've got a few little strays so I'm gonna do a little haircut real quick because uh, those can drive you nuts if they're out and about where they should be okay all right, my brush just had a cute little haircut. Doing much better now. All right, so it has been rinsed out. Fresh little haircuts. <laughs> they don't always need that, but sometimes they just have a few that are quite a bit longer and then they can really straggle on you and then, you know, continue paint into areas where you don't want paint to be. So it's just moist now, a nice fine point, ready to go. And let's go ahead and get some, I've got some from earlier, but let's do a fresh dollop of our Mars Black. little pea size amount right there always recap keeps your paint nice and fresh long lasting that way and with these strokes you want them to be very uh, fluid easy to move so sometimes and this is very thick paint so let's just grab let me actually show you what I'm doing here let's grab just just kind of barely touch into a little bit of water drag the edge off of it too much water but I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of water here to my black it just thins it out a little bit and makes it a little bit easier to move makes it a bit more fluid on the surface area and then um, I, do, I don't want any like too much excess of water I'm gonna go ahead and use all of that water to go ahead and mix into the paint to where I don't have any 
water drops that will just drop out onto my surface area. So I kind of squeegee that out by twisting the head of the brush into the paint. Now I have a nice fine point because it twists it back into a nice fine point. And then that paint has been thinned out a little bit with the water so it's easier to move. And then now what I can do is I can go ahead and rework over the line now. And see how you can make a nice thick black line right over the top. Very pretty. Just like that. And you do have to keep working back into the black paint. Again, remember to keep twisting it. So you always have that nice fine point and then just apply it right over the line just like that. And my paint's still a bit wet so I'm actually picking up a little bit of that residual wet paint from behind it but if yours is dry like I recommended then you won't have that issue at all. And this will be even easier for you as a beginner to do. Right, and I'm going to come down. See how I picked up that wet orange? Yours is dry, that won't happen. So I'm going to rework that to make it black again. Again, doing that little twist into the paint. The nice fine point again. Using a very light, gentle hand over the top. Oops, go, oh, wow, that looks cool on the other side, doesn't it? Oh, that's fun. <laughs> it really gives you an idea of what it looks like. That's awesome. All right, now let's start to work in this other side here. And this paint over here on this side is quite a bit drier than that over there. I really should have started over here. Note to self. All right, really pretty. Still twisting into that black. Making those thick black lines right over the top. Let's see, I think we've got our defining lines now all the way through. And now we just really have the ones at the base, too. So we've got the thick black lines that'll come down here. Let's see that just underneath. And then what I'll do is I'll bring that black. You can leave it just clear like that. That's really kind of pretty. Or if you want, you can just hold this section of the glass like this, and you can take that black all the way to the stem too. Just kind of up to you what you like. So just reworking that black line a little bit. Got a little bit of transparency here by my purple, so I'm going to rework that, make it nice and thick in there. So definitely recommend, again, Sharpie will help you do that first run at it, so it'll give you confidence. Um, but then do come back in with your little bit brush and your black paint to make that nice thick black line of paint that comes around all those shapes. So again, this is very much like a, let's go this way, like a stained glass look. And you can see how it's looking beautiful, just like stained glass. Okay, and then let me, this, this was kind of fun. See how on the other side? I love that. See that, hear that noise? 
that was breakfast <laughs> that's breakfast being ready that's exciting or i guess now lunch sorry that's lunch that's lunch being ready my honey bear is making us lunch all right so there it is there's our beautiful stained glass uh wine glass so practical conversation points on this this is uh dishwasher safe shatterproof um however the acrylic paint it will be pretty durable for the most part for you know a few washes but washing will take a toll on the acrylic paint um so get a few good runs out of it but i would recommend these being more just purely decorative and having them just up on your shelf for the most part that's how that's what i would do but um yeah it's just a really fun easy project gives you a sense of accomplishment and also this is our our first coat so of course if you do want to do second coats on this you certainly can i would definitely um, if you do want second coats make sure you do all that before you do your final coat of black lines that go in between all of those to help come back out and define those at the very end. Make sure that black is the very last thing um, that you do. But ta -da, there it is. So that's our fun little project. Everything you need is on our website, tipsyartist.com. But y'all have a beautiful rest of the day. Hopefully you can have a little bit of wine and relaxation as well. That'll be fun. Or whatever you want to put in here. Or just again have it as decor. So yay. Awesome. All right, y'all have a lovely day, and we'll see you soon. Toodles.